resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. I first heard about Lincoln back actually when we were working on uh, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull because Lincoln was planned to be the next project and so uh, Spielberg talked to uh, Richard Hims and myself about uh, moving on to work on that show next but uh, due to scheduling or other concerns that was um, postponed uh, indefinitely and put off for a number of years until finally it resurfaced about a year ago. It was clear from reading the script that uh, the bulk of the movie was taking place in Washington D.C. in 1865 in the White House or in Congress in the House of Representatives and environments around those buildings. And so um, there wasn't going to be uh, battles and armies of Gettysburg or other things that we might have thought the film might have had initially being set during the Civil War period. But I had this idea that it would be very uh, interesting and perhaps inspiring to deal with authenticity. <laughs> It dealt with very realistic situations and the dialogue in the film, much of it came from memoirs and letters of the time. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting if we could uh, put into the film many actual sounds that Lincoln may have heard during his lifetime? Uh, do those sounds still exist and where could I find them? Sound recording uh, did not appear until Edison's phonograph in the mid-1870s. And so there's no recordings of Lincoln's voice, there's no recordings of the Civil War or what things sounded like around the White House in 1865. It can only be reconstructed uh, based upon descriptions that have been in the accounts, uh, biographical accounts and historical accounts of the time. And there is a lot of information about that. So you, I started by reading as much as I could about Lincoln in those times to gather information and then did research as to what kinds of sounds would there have been, say, near the White House at that time, you know, was there busy traffic nearby? Were there steam trains operating in Washington? How far away were the train yards? Uh, were there churches that had bells that would be heard in the White House and so on? And uh, that led me down a trail to gather sounds from museums, or to go to locations today where we could record the authentic material. I had, I had an idea that um, since a lot of the movie took place in the White House, that there maybe would be some sounds in the White House today that we could go and record that would apply to this movie. And so uh, I made contact with Michelle Obama's uh, office. Uh, a very nice uh, woman there named Samantha Tubman helped us uh, get into the White House. It took weeks, of course, to get to explain what we were going to do. It hadn't been done before, as far as I know. Um, but we wanted to go in there with some uh, portable handheld recorders and record uh, principally the clock that was, had been in Lincoln's office during the uh, Civil War. That clock is still there today on the same mantelpiece upstairs on, in the White House in what's called the Lincoln bedroom. And uh, so, uh, along with uh, my recording partner, Greg Smith, we went to the White House one afternoon and spent about two hours there recording uh, three different clocks that were there at the time of the Lincoln administration. And also we recorded the mahogany doors that are in the White House the, where you know, we knocked on the doors various ways. We handled the, the hardware and turned the keys and, and opened and closed them with different degrees of force so that any time in the movie you, you hear that, that sort of sound, it's not Foley, it's, it's not production sound, but rather it's the actual doors in the White House that you're hearing. And likewise, the ticking of the clocks in the Lincoln bedroom in the uh, Lincoln's office uh, are the authentic clocks from that time. They were, they were clocks, they were French clocks that were uh, purchased by Andrew Jackson in the 1830s. And they were sitting around uh, the various rooms of the White House during Lincoln's time and are still there today. One of the first things on my list to try to record, because the script described the scene uh, of its use, was Lincoln's pocket watch. Uh, I wonder whether any of those watches still exist anywhere. And it turns out there's, a, there's a, at least two of them out there that belong to Lincoln. Uh, one is in the Smithsonian a collection, 
And uh, I wondered uh, whether anyone had ever thought to wind them up and see if they still would tick. And in fact, no one had done that. So um, we inquired about the watch at the Smithsonian. Uh, could we record it? And they were, they were interested, but there was a lot of hesitation about possibly damaging the watch. But the second watch that we located was in the Kentucky Historical Society. And they were more than willing to try to see if their watch would function. And they wound it up, and it did. And so um, we sent Greg Smith, our recordist, to them. He built a special box, a little soundproof box that you could put the watch in uh, with the microphone and so on and close the lid. We had a little tram microphone we, we put in with the watch. And they were very excited that they could hear the watch ticking. It probably hadn't been wound up for a century or something, or maybe a century and a half, who knows. And, and this was the watch that uh, uh, allegedly was in his pocket when he went to Ford's Theater and was assassinated. The pocket watch is something intimate to the character. It, it sits in a pocket near your heart, you know, and that's the kind of thing that you would hear on your person uh, and probably forget about after a while, day in and day out. And to think that that, that ticking was what was present for all this history um, and heard by the Lincoln family, I thought was uh, very exciting. I thought it was an honor to work on, first of all, a film that uh, it's, the, the message of the film is one of hope and honesty, and it's about a great man that it's, you, you know you're kind of educating the audience, and, and I get a satisfaction out of that. Because I love history, and I have a great respect for Abraham Lincoln, and I've always read about him over the years, and have, have in a sense, dreamed of working on a film that would recreate his world, so here was that dream come true. It was a pleasure also to, uh, stylistically to be involved in this because it was not a loud movie. It was not full of, uh, the first five minutes didn't have the destruction of the universe and then you uh, continue on from there as many films do nowadays. And so it wasn't a matter of trying to orchestrate one loud thing against another. It was orchestrating elo eloquent subtleties with each other. And, and that was uh, creatively a real pleasure because you know, I don't have that many opportunities in my career to do that sort of thing.